We lived in South Bend. When I got to be about 12, missing with the kids in the neighborhood, what we would do in August is go out and watch the team practice. Because, you know, the team comes in early. And that was back then in 23 and 24 with Rockney and the four horsemen. And we would hitchhike, hop on the back of the streetcar and duck our heads so the conductor couldn't see us and ride out there and go out and watch practice. They didn't have any fences, so you would be right there and kids would be in there mixing them. Maybe pick up a football now and then throw it back and forth. And on game day, we would go out before the game and then when the team started coming out, we would run to try to get in line and jog with them. You know, the players were like kid brothers to them, little brothers. And they would reach out and bring us in and take us through. But after we got in the gate and near, near the field, then we would drop off, sometimes run as far as we could go with them. And so that's, you now was beginning to be our introduction to Notre Dame. When I was 13, when Jewish kids are supposed to be bar mitzvahed, when my father sat down and he said one thing to me, it didn't mean much then. He said, Joseph, you're Jewish. And as a Jew, you're responsible to and for your fellow man. Didn't mean much to me then. But then I keep thinking about that. And that was him. He too was sent to Siberia because he wanted to try to change the world. I don't remember an hour that I didn't see my mother. She wasn't working. She was always working and always driving us as kids. Somehow that got into me. And so whenever something came up, I would remember that and said, am I going to contribute to it or slow it down? Whatever the move was is what's my part. We've got to be become more involved in trying to change thought. That's why I ran for Congress. People would look at me first as the freak, who's, you know, this guy running for office at 101. And that might give me an audience where I could go out and then talk about the issues we wanted to talk about and question our representative. I love to discuss and I love to question people. I no question what their interests are, and uh, have fun. So I ran as a write-in candidate. Rita Joe was injured in the birthing process. You could see the indentations where they had used the forceps to pull her out. He broke blood vessels in their head. So there was bleeding and hemorrhaging, which filled the space for the brain growth and destroyed whatever brain growth there is. So Rita Jo never walked or talked. She had to be fed, clothed and dressed. You know, everything had to be done for. And my wife Sophie said to me, there's got to be others with similar problems. Because at that time, they wouldn't want you on the playgrounds. In Indiana, a school community would not be reimbursed for teaching. And finally decided that the best way and perhaps the only way to get a lot of attention would be a demonstration. And I don't mean marching on the streets, but start our own school. So this is what we did. The concern we had, like a lot of parents, similar parents in situations had, what happens when we die? And Rita Jo is still here. We don't trust society to take care of our kids. This was after Logan was operating. We designed and created a program in which Logan would promise to become the guardian of any child 
the parents were deceased. And so we created the Protective Services Board. If you ask me what I'm proudest of, this is it. We met playing bridge for two years. We kind of flirted with each other, but neither one of us picked it up. He said, I'd like to take you home. Just waiting for that moment for about three months at this point. And we're sitting in a car talking. I said, how about coming in? He said, no, no, it would just talk for a few minutes. Meanwhile, those few minutes were two hours. And the battery ran down, so I called AAA. So he had to come in the house. It was three o'clock by the time he got home. Yeah, not one kiss, and that's the God's honest truth, not one kiss. There is a tentative plan which her daughter is putting in place, that when she reaches 100, we'll get married. We keep going for any occasion that gives us a chance to have enjoyment. Whenever you have an opportunity, have fun. Don't pass them up, because you don't know how many of them you're going to have. Joe. What? Yes. I want to give you this special award. I love that. So this is from the Notre Dame Alumni Association, but really from the entire university. We'd like to name you a distinguished alumnus of Notre Dame. I appreciate that. I think it would make me happier. And we think you've definitely distinguished yourself in so many ways. Thanks for making us so proud. Oh, thank you. And thank Notre Dame.